welcome to Great British Ghosts. In this new series, I'm going to be traveling around the country to discover some of the most haunted places in Britain. Today, I've come to East Sussex. Later on, I'll be visiting a 13th century priory. But first, I'm in Rye, which is an amazing historical town. And despite its romantic charm, it has a history of highwaymen and ruthless smugglers, many of whom stayed here at the Mermaid Inn. The Mermaid Inn is one of the oldest and reputedly most haunted inns in Britain. It sits in the heart of the old town of Rye, down on the Sussex coast, and literally oozes history. The town itself is still a busy fishing port, and the inn was said to be used as a base by a notorious band of smugglers, and is rumoured to be haunted by no less than five different ghosts. Its owner for the past 20 years is Judith Blinko, who agreed to show me around. We have many, many guests who stay purely hoping to see ghosts. And uh, I always think it's the people who are coming not to expect ghosts that seem to see them, opposed to those just sitting in wait. And this is one of our most interesting rooms where there have been a lot of paranormal activity. So what paranormal events have happened in this room? Uh, we had a seance last year. Um, there were five members of staff, all pretty sceptical. And we all literally sat around a round table and we looked over here and the gentleman that was holding the seance said to us all, my face will now change as I become the spirit of one of the uh, long dead of this room. And all of us saw his face change. Um, it sort of like grew on one side and literally we all stood there. It was quite scary. And at one point in this corner, um, he said he was speaking to an actual spirit and he, he told each one of us in turn to come over and we put our arm through and our arms actually disappeared into where his body in theory would be. And again, we all saw the same thing. I saw my arm disappear, they saw my arm disappear. And it was just really, really bizarre. I'm sure that the Mermaid Inn is haunted, having been here now for 28 years. And it's the same rooms that people see things in year after year after year. And this area of the room is really interesting. Was this a secret passageway? Yes, it's actually marked as a fire exit, yeah. but all the fire exits now are the old secret passages. And what would this have been used for? This goes down to the back of the bar, mm -hmm. and that is actually one of our rooms, room 16, which has got most of the ghostly stories. We can't actually go there in the moment, I'm afraid, because there's someone staying. So what are the stories? There are several, but the most common one that keeps cropping up is at the turn of the century, um, when we first bought the hotel, we got the story from the library that a couple were asleep in the bed, lady had woken up, seen two people fighting, woke her husband up so they both saw the same story. And uh, they had a sword fight, one gentleman killed the other and the body disappeared through the wall which would have come through here and down. Also, last year, we had a gentleman who left his camera running on slow all night, and at quarter past two, um, you actually see at this corner of the room, uh, it goes very dark, and uh, you see a strange light dart straight down to the floor, and you could hear metal on metal. And the same week, someone took three photos on their digital camera, and the middle one shows a figure, and again, on the digital camera, it shows the time, and that was quarter past two as well, in the same room. With the sword fight in room 16, um, the body supposedly went through the secret passage, which in turn has a little set of stairs which goes down to the back of the bar. And in the good old days, the bar was actually on that particular corner. And uh, one day we actually had a barman came to work and all the bottles in front of him fell off the shelf. And the last thing we saw of him was his bow tie left on the side and he left, we never saw him again. There's so much history at the Mermaid Inn that it's little wonder the building is so haunted, with nearly every bedroom having its own ghost story. So what happened in this one? This room um, was a couple fast asleep in the bed here, and they saw a figure walk through this wall, across the room, and through that one. 
And it was really bizarre because when I came on duty at eight in the morning, they're fast asleep on the couch downstairs and they refused to come back up and get their clothes. So we had to bring all their stuff from the room downstairs so they could go and get changed. So they were terrified? Yep, wouldn't come back up at all. So Judith, what's it like to work in a place that is renowned for having so many ghosts? Um, I was a little bit spooked, obviously, to begin with, but I've never had what I would class as a really bad feeling. Um, I can quite happily turn up in the morning or work late at night and just not have that spooky feel. The hairs don't stand up on the back of my neck or anything like that, really. I'm quite pleased that the Mermaid Inn is haunted. Um, it adds a little bit more character to the building. It's people so want to know about ghosts. And if this helps and it helps staying here and it, people do enjoy staying here, why not? Peter Kostick is Rye's heritage officer and knows all too well how the town's history is connected to the ghostly goings-on at the Mermaid Inn. I think the Mermaid Inn is so haunted because it's got so much history. It was rebuilt in 1420. It was previously burnt down. It's had so many souls that have passed through this particular building and structure. It's a very old building and we can't get away from it. It is going to have squeaks and bumps and things like that that naturally happen. Um, the walls aren't that thick and the floorboards are very squeaky, so you will hear things that have got nothing to do with the paranormal, but that's part of its charm, I think. The Mermaid Inn has had a chequered history, and in the 17th century was home to the notorious Hawker Smugglers Gang. They were very ruthless, to the point that Mermaid Street in their day was virtually a no-go area. You would not want to walk down Mermaid Street at night. Um, you, ran, you ran the gauntlet and there was no law and order so they could do what they liked and they would murder if they needed to. So Peter, how do you think all this smuggling history has manifested itself in the haunting of the Mermaid Inn? One of the stories that always tend to crop up is the servant girl. Um, who was in the Mermaid Inn and was murdered by, the, by members of the Hawkehurst gang because they felt she had betrayed them. And her boyfriend was, was a member of the Hawkehurst gang, but actually she hadn't. And that particular apparition does actually show itself to some of the guests in some of the rooms that they've seen when they've actually stayed here. Well, the Mermaid Inn is certainly full of fascinating history and ghosts, and a lot of that is connected to smuggling. Now, if those smugglers were caught, then they were carted off to the town jail, which apparently is quite an eerie place to visit after dark. In fact, it's said that the local jail is the most haunted place in all of Rye. So naturally, it sits right next door to the town's graveyard. I'd arranged to meet the man with the keys, local historian Ted Empson. Hi, Ted. Hello, good evening. Welcome to our gorgeous town. So this, this was the town jail, was it? It was over 400 years of town jail, yeah. It was never built as a jail, but that's what it was used for for the most of the time. It's like a pretty horrible place to be holed oh, up for a no. night or two. <laughs> it's lovely in there. Come in and have a look, some sort of things. Gee, that is a big door. Yep, well, you can go first. The tower was built in 1249. Um, it was turned into a prison in the 1400s. It was a prison for 400 odd years. And what sort of people would have been prisoners here? Um, well, common criminals, thieves, um, drunks who were you know, sobering up drunks, um, press men who jumped ship. They would have been put in here until the ship came in. Smugglers, of course, because a lot of smuggling in the area. This is one of the six rooms that was used as a cell. And how many people would they chuck in here? Any, anything up to six at a time and it was busy. So standing room only? Absolutely, yes. Of course, you could probably have sat against one of the walls and got a bit of sleep.
According to Ted, the Tower Jail has had hundreds of ghost sightings down through the centuries, right up to the present day. What other hauntings have happened here? We've had a number of hauntings. People have seen and heard children in the building, and we had one particular lady who was up here one night, and she felt as though there was a, a woman, a wise woman here, who was cooking up potions. We've also had people feeling very nasty things downstairs in one of the cell rooms. I think there's so many ghosts here because of, if we go back into the history, is that there's been so much trauma here. There's so many troubled souls here. And that's what I think that's when we call ghosts or spirits, whatever we want to put them into, is that it's the trauma that they've suffered, it's the death, the suicide. That's what's left their residue here. It's residue energy. John, have you had any paranormal experiences yourself? I have. Um, one particular one, which will stand out for me for quite a long time, was down in the garden. Um, the team I was with had gone into the women's tower to see what was in there, and I stood outside, and I just got the feeling there was something really sort of not very pleasant going on at this end of the garden, underneath here. And I looked round, and I, I can't say I saw anything, but it was just a feeling that it was very broody. You know, there was something going on. So I went upstairs to talk to the team, and they came down, and the chap who was the medium came rushing up here and he stood there for a number of moments and he started saying that there was something here, it was big and black and it was coming up the side of the tower. Well, at least it's light out here. Oh, it's much better out here in the evening. Which way? It's just down here, come down these steps. So Ted, does the garden always have an eerie feel to it? Oh no, no, during the daytime it's a, it's a very pleasant place to be. It just takes on this different persona at night. Here we go, down here, by the steps. When you had that paranormal experience down here, mm. what do you think it was? Um, it, I, I don't know personally what it was. It was just something down the end of the garden there, which was most unpleasant. Whatever was down there was a, a, a accumulation of the nasties of the tower, of, of the area, in one sort of conscious thing. No, I, I don't know, I, can't, I haven't got the words to describe it. But that's why it's called the unexplained. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, it was very unexplained. Do you mind if we go now? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, Rye really is a fascinating place, and almost every building is like a historical picture postcard. The Mermaid Inn has some great ghosts in, let's face it, a stunning setting. But as for that tower jail, well, to me, it was very oppressive. And I'm rather glad to be walking away from it. This is Michelin Priory near Hailsham in Sussex. And as you can see, it's a gorgeous building. It's surrounded by a moat and it dates back to 1229. That's 800 years of history and that usually provides for some great ghosts. Michelin was originally founded as an Augustine Priory back in the 13th century, but the building you see today was largely rebuilt in the Victorian era after a series of fires. It has a reputation for being one of the most haunted places in Sussex, and one of the Priory's official guides, Roy Le Croisette, agreed to introduce me to some of the ghosts. Michaela, welcome to the prior's room. This room is reputed to be the most haunted in the building. Some people are absolutely terrified of this room. Now, we're going to go into and have a look in this corner and let yeah. me tell you a little story. One day I came in here and I saw a little girl there, something between the ages I would think of about six and ten. And we had a little bit of conversation from there. She said, you're not coming any further, please. I said, okay, I respect what you said. She said, but later on, we will meet again, I hope. I said, so do I. And then she just disappeared. There was nobody there. <laughs> this little girl, I think, had a very unhappy childhood and she was desperate, in that's the way I pick it up, and she was desperate for somebody that she could talk to and I happened to be the lucky person.
Well, obviously, this is the kitchen. Yes, indeed, Michaela, and this is our lovely kitchen, which is something over 200 years old, and you'll see the different bits we've got in here. And it was in this room that I had a most interesting experience at about two o'clock in the morning, and uh, it was in here that I met a character standing over there dressed as a cook or a chef. And the first thing I noticed was that he had a nice long knife, about that end long, and one end was slightly scooped, and he was working on a piece of meat on the spit down here, mm -hmm. and he was cutting out the bad bits and chucking them away, and I thought that was very nice of him. And we got talking, and amongst other things, he said yes, he said, of course, he said, this is hard work. I said, well, why? He said, what? I said, what do you like doing? He said, the easiest thing of the lot is eels. He said, because I can cook those so fast and people think they're wonderful. But if, if you'd reached out to him, what would you have felt? Would you have been able to feel him? Um, he was very real, it was slightly red face. Um, he had some sort of an apron on, brawny great arms, that much I do remember, and a sense of humour. He, he was stouter than I am, put it that way. But it's not just the guides that have seen ghosts. Paranormal investigator Clint Davey has spent many nights at Mitchellum and believes that it is haunted. Well, we've had a few paranormal experiences here. Um, part of our group that we were in have been here on three separate occasions. Um, and we were just drawn to the place from hearing what other people had experienced here. Um, particularly one point of interest is at the entrance to this place, so the gatehouse. Um, and there are talks of a grey lady that is supposed to be seen staring into the moat, um, looking for her daughter that either vanished or drowned. And the story is that she killed herself and a small dog. So um, one particular evening, we were setting up our equipment in the gatehouse. Um, a vital piece of equipment had been left behind. So it was left to me to go and fetch this piece of equipment in the house. And it wasn't until I got outside of the gatehouse, I realized that it is quite dark. So I started to run. And it wasn't until I started to run, it actually sounded like a small dog, like a terrier, was chasing me back to the house. And it spooked me quite a bit that um, a lot of the crew found it quite funny when I arrived and tried to explain that I'd been chased by a dog that wasn't there. So that was quite interesting. And the dog definitely wasn't there, you it checked? It definitely wasn't there, no. But it was, I just, it was almost too good to be true that I felt as if something had run in and was chasing me, but it was dark and I was too scared to look behind. There was another occasion in the music room, um, and as we walked in, there were, um, we found a nice spot in the room, four of us stood together, um, just lights off, trying to see what we could pick up, if there's anything we could find. Um, and the best part of this, I didn't actually see this, but two other people in my group could back it up and say they saw it themselves. Um, it, was, it was a full moon, and it was putting shadows through the leaded windows onto the fireplace. Um, and it was at that point where two of them jumped at the same time and noticed a shadow on the fireplace coming from outside of a man in a tall hat that seemed to go past the window. And the fact that they both saw it at the same time and could back it up was quite fascinating. This is the actual footage that Clint's paranormal group shot that night. There is something moving in front of the lens, but is it part of an outline of a ghost or just a piece of fishing wire? There was another time in the music room. Um, one of the girls in the group was um, videoing and each vigil was about an hour long, but it was only 20 minutes in. She slammed the lens cap onto the camera. All she told us was that we need to get out. We need to get out now. Um, of course, spooked, we all got outside and uh, with a shaking hand, she drew a picture of a face that she saw quite close by her, um, which seemed to be a man, and all she could make up was the top of an airman's uniform, and she even described the colour as brown. And it's not through looking through research afterwards, finding out that a lot of Canadian Air Force stayed here during the Second World War, um, and that spooked her quite a bit. Chris Tuckett is the caretaker manager of Mitchellum and lives on the premises. One night, he was woken by a terrifying noise. I've been living here for 12 years, and in the first two weeks I was here, um, I experienced two really vivid um, things that happened to me. And firstly, there was a, a bureau when I moved in, and we put a bureau here. 
Um, three or four nights later, I woke up in the bedroom um, and I could hear this really loud banging in my bedroom's next door. I was terrified. I hid under my duvet 15 minutes and after some time, uh, developed the courage to come in, turn the light on and have a look. And walked over and it looked like the bureau had, had moved, but just a couple of feet until I looked at the floor um, and there was a, a huge figure of eight scratch which sort of came out and came back on itself. Um, and that really, really freaked me out. I've got to be honest with you, I've been here you know, 12 years now. That first two weeks was, was awful, it really was. Um, I'm a local guy, I'm not scared of the dark and I never used to believe in ghosts. I do, now. Is there any historical evidence of what that could possibly have been? Not to my knowledge. I know it sounds crazy to you, but I don't really want to know. Um, I live in this place and I've learned to deal with it. And, and it's sort of like a, a subconscious deal. I think if I don't intrude with them, then hopefully they won't interfere with me too much. There was one more twist to the tale, though. Clint Davies' paranormal group had taken a series of photos in the gatehouse stairwell one of which seems to have a figure of eight in it. The same pattern that the caretaker said was carved into his floor. Make of that what you will. Well, that's it from Sussex. We visited two stunning places, Mitchell and Priory and the Mermaid Inn in Rye. Both have had fascinating histories and some great British ghosts. See you next time. Bye-bye. Recounting Himmler's plans to realise Hitler's vision of a pure Aryan Germany, it's into the war zone with the world at war in half an hour. After the haunted pub crawl continues with more great British ghosts. New to yesterday, next. <laughs>